65 miners are stuck in a blocked mine pit with nowhere to escape. They have tried every means to survive to no avail. The bad part is that there is a poisonous gas in this pit they are in that kills faster if inhaled and they all have to escape death. They must all be able to enter this tiny capsule to survive and meet their family. But it seems like some greedy government official want them dead. Welcome to Thriller Recaps, today, I am explaining the movie Mission Runny Gunge, The Great Barret Rescue, explaining every scene as it happens. Watch till the end, and please like, share and subscribe if you enjoy this. The movie unfolds at Mahabir's Colliery in Kunastoria area, Ranigunj, as miners prepare to start their shift. One worker expresses his reluctance to work the night shift from the next day, while another eagerly volunteers for overtime even though it's already nighttime. As the miners are checked for alcohol before entering the mine lift, Burju secretly follows his uncle. They descend into pits 1 and 2, and amidst casual conversation about a son-in-law's government job, they attempt to extract coal. Unfortunately, their efforts result in a sudden influx of water, prompting a frantic call to the office about the flooding. A miner warns his colleagues to escape, and they race to pit 1 for the lift. While most manage to flee, some get trapped as the mine floods. The rescue van, en route to save the miners, faces an obstacle. Jusvant, learning about the crisis, takes charge to clear the road, informing his team and heading to Mahabir on a motorcycle. Upon arrival, he witnesses families and fellow miners protesting and intervenes to prevent security from dispersing them, recognizing the gravity of the situation. After displaying his ID card, Jusvant assures the anxious wives of trapped miners that everyone will be rescued. Durga, a distraught woman who lost her brother in a previous mine incident, breaks down and faints, but Jusvant revives her, surprising the onlookers. Addressing the crowd, Jusvant reveals the names of the mine's chairman and managing director, pledging to find a solution. As the mine board leaders grapple with the challenge, Mr. Yujual, the chairman, panics upon hearing that the miners might have perished. Despite the board's initial lack of viable ideas, Jusvant steps in, offering assistance. At Coal India headquarters in Calcutta, Yujual and Jusvant examine plans for the mine's layout. Details emerge about the miners' locations during the blast, and it is revealed that 71 miners remain trapped, with five confirmed dead. Jusvant proposes using 10 continuous pumps for dewatering, ensuring uninterrupted power supply and restricting train speeds. While the board mobilizes, D. Sun, the director of ECCL, Ranchi, appears reluctant to be involved. Jusvant investigates flooded pits, reporting to Yujual that certain routes are impassable due to water, complicating the rescue operation. Yujual receives distressing news that the situation has escalated, prompting him and Jusvant to rush to the scene. Upon arrival, they witness Govardhan assaulting a worker and making threats. Jusvant intervenes to defuse the tension, but Govardhan vows to harm Yujual and his coal company if anything happens to the trapped miners. D. Sun joins them, claiming to have a rescue plan focused on the Ninga pit. Jusvant, having surveyed the area, disagrees, but Sen insists and assures Govardhan of a successful rescue. Jusvant, concerned about the collapsing soil due to water seepage, issues a warning to the train station, compelling them to cooperate. Despite objections, Sen pushes his plan, leading Jusvant to advocate for his own rescue strategy during a meeting with mine safety officials. As conflicting ideas arise, Jusvant suggests using capsules, facing skepticism from others. Sen questions Jusvant's expertise, but Jusvant persists in presenting his well-thought-out plan. The officials, including Vasant and Yujual, deliberate on the proposals, ultimately siding with Jusvant. Yujual and Vasant grant permission for Jusvant's plan, and after the meeting, Jusvant requests a drilling engineer and someone innovative leading to the selection of Jagadu Bindal. Mining engineer and drilling contractor T.P. Bindal is contacted, along with former surveyor Tupan Ghosh, for the rescue mission. However, Tupan initially refuses due to past grievances with Coal India stemming from the Durgapur tragedy. Jusvant, determined to secure Tupan's assistance, promises to clear his dues, ultimately convincing him. As Bindal embarks on his journey, Jusvant begins planning, although skepticism surrounds his approach. Meanwhile, at Sen site, a rescue attempt is underway, witnessed by workers and families. Tupan, persuaded by his wife, decides to join Jusvant's team. Despite a lack of belief in Jusvant's plan, the rescue team is sent into the pit, facing immediate challenges with a water wave. Despite warnings, Sen urges them to continue, and miraculously, the miners are pulled up unharmed. Jusvant, alongside surveyors and Tupan, proceeds with his plan, digging a borehole for the capsule. With the mine still flooding, miners, located three kilometers away from the highest point, are alerted to the approaching water and instructed to head to the highest point for safety, 
as it will take days for the water to reach them there. Amidst growing discontent, the trapped miners express feelings of abandonment, convinced that the management doesn't care for their well-being. Pashu attempts to uplift their spirits, encouraging them to move to the highest point for safety. However, their path is blocked by water, prompting a dilemma among the miners, some decide to brave the water, while others opt to stay and avoid it. On the surface, the drilling of the borehole commences as a large crowd gathers at just one site, having lost faith in Sen's failed plans. The miners, facing obstacles, decide to cross the water to reach the highest point. During the perilous journey, Shalagram injures his feet, but with assistance, he perseveres. As the borehole is completed, the miners finally reach the highest point, where Shalagram receives care. However, a revelation unfolds that he sold his mining shoes for much-needed money. Jusvant, in an attempt to communicate, calls out the miners' names and shines a flashlight through the hole he dug, urging them to move towards the light if they can hear. Despite his efforts, there is no response, leading to a prevailing belief that the miners may have perished, as Jusvant continues his desperate attempts to establish contact without success. At K.P. Natrajan's home, he learns that both rescue attempts have yielded negative results, leading him to decide to halt the operation. Sen deems it tragic, asserting that the miners, if alive, would have reached the highest point. However, Jusvant discovers that a stoppage wall could have impeded the miners' ascent, prompting him to suggest another borehole. Simultaneously, the miners, unaware of the ongoing rescue suspension, attempt to break down a wall, only to realize they're not at the highest point. The tragic discovery of six dead miners at pit number one deepens the board's belief that the rest are likely deceased. Usual advocates for another borehole, but the board dismisses his plea, concluding the rescue operation. Frustration and grief grip the miners' families, leading some to attack Jusvant as hope dwindles. Amidst the chaos, the flashlight is retrieved before the miners can reach it, eliciting desperate screams from the hole. However, a dog's alertness prompts Jusvant to realize the miners are still alive, reigniting the rescue mission. Celebrations ensue among the miners and their families, but Sun, contacted by his boss, vows to cause problems for Jusvant. The boss, focused on destroying Yujual's career, warns Sen to ensure his plan doesn't backfire, underscoring the ongoing challenges in the quest to safely rescue the miners. Essential supplies, including a phone, food, drugs, and a lamp to check for poisonous gases, are sent to the trapped miners, and Pashu is assigned to inspect for toxic fumes. Unfortunately, he initially conceals the presence of poisonous gases to reassure his fellow miners. Upon learning the truth, Jusvant realizes that carbon dioxide has accumulated in the cave, and he informs the team that there are only 48 hours to save the miners. Despite starting the rescue plan promptly, the construction of a borehole requires 40 hours. Meanwhile, Sen undermines Jusvant's efforts, sabotaging plans and causing disruptions. Families communicate with the trapped miners, while Sen demolishes houses. As the gas continues to spread, the rescue team faces a critical eight-hour window to save the miners. Fortunately, the drill proves successful, much to Sen's chagrin. Despite Sen's attempts to discredit Jusvant's plan, the rescue mission continues. In a meeting with Yujual and Jusvant, Sen expresses doubts about the success of the rescue, claiming the village will sink, showcasing his ongoing opposition to their efforts. Jusvant, undeterred by Sen's opposition, successfully obtains the crane he requested. Sensing a hidden agenda, Jusvant confides in Yujual about his distrust of Sen and his boss, suspecting they aim to undermine Yujual's position. Sen's boss instructs him to take credit if Jusvant's plan succeeds. Jusvant maintains communication with his wife while the miners, particularly Bol, discover the truth about the gas-filled mine, leading to panic and plans for a riot against the management. In the face of the crisis, Jusvant strategically informs the miners about the gas formation, initially concealed to prevent panic. With six hours left to save the miners, Jusvant reassures their families and sends a microphone to maintain contact. Bol remains skeptical until Jusvant explains the earlier deception to prevent panic. Motivated once more, the miners receive additional food, and while Nihal initially refuses to eat, the group rallies to lift his spirits and encourage him to eat. Bola, initially angry, eventually reconciles with the group, fostering a sense of unity and determination among the trapped miners. After 28 hours of intense effort, the capsule is finally prepared, sparking celebration among the trapped miners who regain hope of soon reuniting with their families. Sen and his boss arrive at the scene as the gas continues to spread rapidly. Jusvant, recognizing the need for a larger crane, requests Sen's assistance, but Sen refuses, 
citing a supposed fault in the crane. Yujuul expresses frustration with Sen's actions, calling him a shame. Despite the setback, Jusvant persists and seeks cranes from various construction companies without success. With only 12 hours remaining and manual rescue efforts proving insufficiently fast, a stroke of luck leads to the acquisition of a crane. As the miners ponder the government's role in their rescue, Jusvant explains the workings of his capsule, seemingly a perfect solution. Jusvant is then advised to rest, and despite objections from Sen's boss, he decides to enter the capsule himself after realizing no one else is willing. Despite concerns about jeopardizing his future, Jusvant, undeterred, says his prayers and bravely ventures into the capsule with only eight hours left to rescue the trapped miners. The rescue operation encounters a setback as the crane proves inadequate to hold the capsule, causing concern among the team. Sen takes satisfaction in the potential failure of the plan. Using a hammer, the team manages to secure the capsule in place, and Jusvant descends to the excited miners, reassuring them and pledging a reunion with their families. First to be rescued is Shalagram, with a severely injured and rotting leg. The successful ascent brings joy as Shalagram reunites with his family, but the gas continues to spread rapidly. As the crane nears, the miners, eager to be rescued, briefly bicker over who goes first, but Jusvant manages to calm them, and they ascend one by one, the miners joyfully reunite with their families, but 40 miners remain to be rescued, with only 5 hours left. The crane faces traffic troubles, and Sen remains adamant in assuring his boss of the operation's failure. Additionally, the water level in the mine intensifies, adding urgency to the race against time. Sun and Govardhan face consequences as they are tied up and beaten for their political manipulation of the miners. Sun, under pressure, admits to sabotaging the crane by removing the hydroquinone pipe, jeopardizing the capsule's movement. Meanwhile, Jusvant's wife arrives with eye drops to protect his vision from the mine. As the capsule handle slips, losing control, they have only four hours left to rescue the remaining miners. Despite the setback, the rescue continues, and the crane eventually arrives providing a 59-minute window. The press is deceived about gas formation to maintain calm, but 57 miners are rescued, and gas starts affecting them. With only 22 minutes left, the gas also impacts Jusvant. As time elapses, men, including Jusvant and Pashu, remain in the mine. Pashu, weakened by the gas, is sent in first, and though the capsule descends, Jusvant passes out. Despite concerns, Jusvant's wife remains hopeful for his return as the intense rescue operation faces its critical moment. As Jusvant's life flashes before his eyes, he regains consciousness and swims towards the capsule, only to realize he forgot the hammer. He bravely goes back into the water to retrieve it, but could not find it. The hammer is the only way to hit the capsule so others can hear and lift him up. He then realized he could use his metallic bracelet as an alternative. Luckily, it worked and he emerges alive, celebrated by the entire town upon his successful rescue. Reuniting with his wife, Jusvant receives praise from Yujuul for his courage, leading to a well-deserved promotion. In a meeting with Sen and his boss over a cup of tea, Jusvant's bravery is acknowledged both domestically and internationally. Revered like a god, he earns the nickname, Capsule Gil. Tupan Ghosh also receives his payment, and Jusvant is honored with the President's Award for the Best Life Saver Medal, marking the culmination of his heroic efforts in the challenging rescue operation. Don't forget to subscribe as this encourages us to make more videos daily, it also helps with the YouTube algorithm. Please, like, share and subscribe. We love you and we'll see you in the next video.